my name is Dolores Gregory. My mom is obviously one of the master artists. But um, I'm born in Anchorage, and, um, but I live in on Alaska, Alaska. Currently, right now, I guess you can say I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, because I'm going to school at UAF. But I still call an Alaska home. It's always going to be my home. Unalaska is a small town, it's a fishing community, and um, it's not a, I mean, as small as other places. It's not as small as Accutan, where Tim lives, um, but we're small by Anchorage's standards. There's maybe 5,000 to 8,000 8, people who live there year-round. Rains a lot, um, foggy a lot doesn't really ever get that high in temperature. It's a town where you can drive down the road and when you're driving, wave at whatever car goes by because you know that person. And you'll probably be waving at, uh, um, you know, you'll wave at least once when you're driving because you, know you know a lot of people. Obviously, you won't know some of the cannery workers or the fishing people who are just there seasonally. But the people who live there, you know each other. You're living on a small island with like five miles of road and tundra out there. But it, I, I love it. I mean, I like to be able to go, you know, go out and walk my dog in the tundra and not have to worry about like a bear or something. He's probably the biggest animal that all the other ones have to fear. I can go out and hike and not worry about anything really. Maybe the weather. The weather's pretty bad and that's what people don't like about it is that it can be pretty nasty sometimes and I like the storms. I think they're fun. Like I mean you can get 100 mile an hour wind gusts more than 100 mile an hour wind gusts but it's just fun to be out you know to be outside kind of and to feel the, the force. They have culture camps back home in the summertime and I think the earliest you can start is like fourth grade or something and um, I, so I started when I could but before then I went I would go with my mom and tag along I guess I would always try and learn everything I could and so as soon as I started to go when I was old enough to attend actually attend it then I went every year until I actually started teaching um, a dance class because they weren't gonna have it one year and um, I heard about it the week, maybe the week before the camp actually started. My mom told me and I was kind of upset so I went and told them with another friend of mine we were in the dance group and we were like well we can try and teach it if you want and so I guess that's where it started. I've always been doing it every summer and I just started teaching a couple years ago at the Anchorage Culture Camp too off and on and mostly apprenticing. There's not many people who are interested in it. I mean, people will say they're interested, but people, they will say it, but they won't really act on it, I guess. I really only do it whenever we have like a class or something or, you know, time set aside. Otherwise, I don't find time to do it. Um, I'm in a dance group back home and uh, I had a regalia. I made it at the Sandpoint Culture Camp, but I made it like, six years ago maybe and so I had to expand it this summer because I couldn't fit it anymore and um you know I'd I'd find my you know I'd, I'd sew just whenever I'd sit and watch TV and sew so I guess that's kind of traditional you know working with the leathers leather needles and furs whenever but otherwise people don't really act on it unless there's a camp going on I guess you can say I've grown up with it. Um, since I can remember, my mom has always been working with the Bentwood Hats, and it's just always been a part of my life. I remember being too little to go to the culture camps to actually participate and make a hat, but I would still try. And sometimes, you know, I was they would give me a little piece of wood and clamp it down and set me down and give me probably one of the dullest chisels that they could find and let me you know, go to town on the piece of wood. It's a, a lot of work to do it. I know after a couple of hours of chiseling your hands, or even just a couple, you know, 10 minutes, 10, 20 minutes of chiseling, my hands will get sore and I have to stop and, you know, flex them. And it's, I've gone through a hat 
just recently, like in the past, you know, I put a hole in it basically and I got so mad because I was rushing and I realized I needed to slow down, but then I went through it again. It like completely took a piece off and it was just, I started another piece of wood and I told myself to calm down, slow down and take it slower because it's not a race or anything. I just appreciate the opportunity to do this. It's, I don't think I could ever have done it, something like this before. Maybe bending the hat, you know, to learn how to do it, to know how to do it by myself. Usually I'll try, I'll tell my mom, I want to do this by myself. I want to bend a hat by myself and she'll start to let me and then she'll end up eventually taking over like I'll be doing it too slow or something. And um, she let me do it by myself this time and it was nice to know how to do it. And I mean, it's only the second time I've ever really actually tried bending a hat and it's nice to know, to learn the, you know, how it feels and everything. And then the wood that I was working with, it had like a weak point in it. So I knew after I'd carved it out that it was going to crack. And I'm learning now how to mend it because you I mean, you're not going to throw it away. You spent all that work on that piece of wood. So why throw it away? So I'm learning now how to mend a crack. It was fun to, I guess, try and um, teach some or explain to some of the uh, people who would come in to see what was going on. So it was just nice to be um, looked at like I actually do know something. I think it's important to learn my culture so I can hopefully try and pass it on when I'm older and not other, peop other people aren't around to do it. Somebody has to and I've realized, I've saw that not, there's not that many kids out there that are going to end up passing it on or even bother learning it so I figured I should at least try to make an effort to do something so it doesn't die out completely. I see myself, I, w I would love to work with my people, with my culture, you know, educating people, um, promoting, I guess. It's kind of I ironic too, because I'm pretty shy. <laughs> I am not a person to go out and make a bunch of different friends, so it's a little bit of a, a push, I guess, for myself to do all this um, leadership stuff and, and, you know, to get involved. A lot of my classes, you know, my business classes, they would say, you know, you got to discuss a lot. It's like I don't really open up if I'm, I don't know many people. So it was a little difficult, but in order to reach my dream, I guess I got to do it.